Okay, welcome back to this Singer 99K13. Again, a credible machine born back in 1930, specifically April 30th, 1930. Again, powered by that 0.6 amp motor. And you're going to see that with this genuine leather so off. Uh, this is the thick of thick. It's a, a very heavy grade piece of cowhide leather. And I'll tell you one thing, there are some machines that would just really struggle getting through material as, as thick and as dense as this. This machine with that 0.6 amp motor will get the job done so easily. But before we launch into this, bear with me for just, just a second. I want to show you some measurements on this machine so you can really appreciate the advantages in the design of this 99K compared to the featherweight. And this is not an opportunity to bash featherweights. I like featherweights a lot, but when I show you the advantage of this, of, of this machine as far as the harp space and um, just the overall portability of it, I think you'll get the point. So getting my handy dandy little tape measure, first of all I'm going to show you that the overall length of this machine is 12 inches, just like the featherweight. But here's where the difference kicks in. The harp space is about an inch and a half longer than the featherweight. If I go from the pillar to the needle, we're at almost seven inches. The, uh, the clearance on the featherweight as far as the harp space across is a little bit over five inches. So you're gaining almost two inches. If we go from front to back, you're looking at six and a half inches. And again, you've gained over an inch there as far as the harp space uh, compared to the featherweight. And finally, the vertical clearance, you're looking at, oh, right around probably five inches or so. Again, not a huge difference there, but you did gain uh, a little bit on the clearance vertically as far as that harp space as well. So the big advantage there is that you've got a machine that is just as compact as the featherweight, but you've got a lot more workspace to maneuver material in that harp area. So I, I love that fact about this machine. Plus I love the fact, as I showed in the introductory video, this knee control. And again, we're more than willing to add a foot control if this machine sells like the last one did for over 400. But I love this knee control, and, and if I bought the machine, I would stick with this. It's so easy to control the machine and so easy to power the machine. Okay, back to our real purpose, this leather so off. Uh, again, if you look at it from the side, we've got a lot of thickness there. But when I bring it down to the needle and engage that 0.6 amp motor with this knee control, watch how this petite powerhouse gets the job done. Notice as well the clearance underneath uh, that presser foot. I'm going to bring that needle up just a little bit. There we go. Um, lots of clearance underneath that presser foot. You could go with two or three layers of this type of leather and you'd still have ample space underneath the presser foot. Okay, here we go a very thick layer of genuine cowhide. I started out slow, but I'll tell you one thing, that machine said let's get her done. And look at the result, just like a featherweight, the real bragging rights of a machine like this is not just the added power, again a 0.6 amp versus a 0.4 amp motor, but the stitch quality. I'll turn it like that as well so you can see it. That is just a gorgeous stitch in every respect. And again, we're talking about through a real thick layer of genuine cowhide. If we turn it around, we've got an equally beautiful lock-in stitch to boot. So whether you're looking to sew leather like this or just have a heavy-duty petite machine, you couldn't do any better than this 99K13.